Hello everyone. So today I have a very beautiful problem from number theory. This problem is actually about this particular number. 401 to the power 50. And this problem came up in the ISI BSTAT BMAT entrance. But it's also useful for mathematical Olympiads such as IOQM. American math competitions and so on. We will learn quite a few things in this problem and at the end of this video I'll give you a small challenge as well. Remember as usual students who solve the challenge problems and put that in the comment section are usually selected for some award or also invited to our YouTube channel. So if you are new to this channel welcome we discuss everything related to mathematical sciences here. At Chinta, we have outstanding programs on mathematical science. Check the link in the description for more details. Let's start with this problem. We have this 401 to the power 50, this particular number. Of course, if you expand this number, that means multiply out all the 401s. If you do that 50 times, you can quickly see that the last number will be 1. This last number of this particular product will be 1. The question says, how many zeros come together just before this 1? So, how many zeros are adjacent to this last one. Okay. So that's the question. It's a very interesting question. You can pause the video and think about it a little bit more. Before we start solving this problem. And learning quite a few things. While we solve the problem. Okay. So. The question is. If you remove this one. If you remove this one, then how many zeros are just before it? So what I'm going to do is, I will just subtract from this 401 raised to 50, I'll subtract 1. Of course, there the last digit will be 0 because I just did 1 minus 1. So last digit is 0. But I would be interested in how many more zeros are available to the left of this last zero? This last zero we won't count because it's just coming from this one minus one. We want how many zeros before it. Okay. So the number of zeros before this last zero will be our answer. So how do we go about it? Well, the first thing, this is sort of the lesson one. For today, we learn quite a few things Why we solve problems. This is how we learn things. Start with a problem, go back to concepts. That's the strategy. Okay. So the lesson one is a very beautiful factorization from algebra. And this factorization is this. A to the power n minus b to the power n is equal to a minus b times a to the power n minus 1 plus a to the power n minus 2 times b and so on up to b to the power n minus 1. This is a very powerful factorization. You should definitely try to derive it. This is the challenge 1. How, how to derive it? You can put it in the comment section. The simplest way to see that this is true is by actually multiplying this out. If you multiply this out, what you will get is, if you multiply all the a's, you will get a to the power n plus a to the power n minus 1 times b up to a times b to the power n minus 1. I just multiplied out the a's. Now, if I multiply out the b's or the negative b's, what would happen? Well, I'll get minus a to the power n minus 1 times b 
So minus b times a to the power n minus 1 is minus a to the power n minus 1 times b. I just wrote it below this one because it matches up. The next one would be minus a to the power n minus 2 times b and so on. The last one would be negative b to the power n. And you will notice that everything would cancel off. Everything in between will paired up, will be paired up and cancel off. And you would get a to the power n minus b to the power n, which you, which is what you exactly had in the beginning. That is sort of the proof. So I actually solved the challenge one, but I still want you to write it in a clear and second way and put it in the comment section. All right. So that's the thing. So we will be using this particular factorization. So 401 raised to 50 minus 1. Let's look at that. So 401 raised to 50 minus 1 is 401 minus 1 times 401 raised to 49 plus 401 raised to 48. I'm not writing the 1 raised to 2 and those kind of stuff because that's just 1. So you keep on doing this up to 401 raised to 1 plus 1. So this is the product now. Okay, that's very good because this thing is just 400. So 400 times 401 raised to 49, 401 raised to 48 up to 401 raised to 1 plus 1. Now comes the second lesson. What are we going to do now? Well, we will be using, this is lesson 2, we will be using modular arithmetic. So if you have not seen modular arithmetic before, I strongly suggest you check the link in the description or join some math olympiad program or ICICMI entrance program and learn more about it. It's a very useful tool in number theory. So what we essentially have here is 401 is congruent to 1 mod 100. So if I divide 401 by 100, the remainder is 1. So if you raise it to the power 49, which you can do, that's one of the properties of modular arithmetic you have 401 raised to the power 49 is also congruent to 1 mod 100, which is exactly what you need in this particular case. All right. So, I will write it in the new page. So, 401 raised to 49 is congruent to 1 mod 100. 401 raised to 48 is congruent to 1 mod 100. And you keep on doing this up to 401 is congruent to 1 mod 100. And finally, the 1 itself is congruent to 1 mod 100. You can also think of this like this, that each of those numbers, 401 raised to the power 49, 401 raised to the power 48, each of them are producing remainder 1 when divided by 100. It's not hard to see, even if you don't know modular arithmetic. Okay, now let's add up everything. So we have 50 pieces here, 50 numbers here to the left hand side. That is 401 raised to the power 0 up to 401 raised to the power 49. We have 50 things here. So if I add them all up, 48 up to 401 plus 1. There are 50 numbers here. So that's 50 plus congruent to 50 mod 100 which basically means that when this entire number is divided by 100 it's giving remainder 50 so this entire number is equal to 100 times some quotient plus 50 this entire number divided by 100 gives remainder 50 means i can write this number as 100 times some quotient plus 50 right Okay, great. So now, what do we have? We have this thing equals to, okay, let me remove this. This is equal to 400 times 100 Q plus 50, right? That's what we found, that this number is 100 times some quotient 
plus 50. So you can also take out, take out a zero. So 4,000 times 10 Q plus 5. 4,000 plus 10 Q plus 5. You can actually take out a 5 as well. So what you have is 4,000 times 5. That is 20,000. Right? 20,000 times 2 Q plus 1. 20,000 times some odd number. Okay. So whatever this odd number is, is it divisible by 5 again? That's the question. If it's not divisible by 5, then we would have four zeros at the end. If it's divisible by 5, then that's a very different issue. So the question is, is this 2Q plus 1? Is this number, the number that you are getting, is it divisible by 5 or not? So if this 2Q plus 1 is not a multiple of 5, it's an odd number, so it's it could be a multiple of 5. So if this is a multiple of 5, then we will have more zeros because that will get multiplied to 2 and then produce another 0. However, if this 2Q plus 1 is not a multiple of 5, then there will be no more zeros. So we will have four zeros at the end of this. Of course, one of this four zero is coming from this one minus one. So we don't care about it. So we would have three zeros before that one. So actually that's our answer. The answer would be three. Answer is three, three zeros. But the question is, we still have to show that this 2q plus 1 is not a multiple of 5. So, notice that this entire thing in the parentheses, that is 100q plus 1 plus 50, and if we take 50 common, then we would have this 2q plus 1. So, if this is a multiple of 5, then this entire thing would be a multiple of 125. It's obviously a multiple of 25 because 100Q plus 50, of course, it's divisible by 25. But is it also divisible by 125? That's the question. So this particular quantity, is it divisible by 125? So what I, what I will do is basically a long way of solving this problem. And remember, the only, way, the re only reason what that we are doing this is because we want to learn all the things that we are learning on the way of solving this problem. One of the challenges that I want to give you is can you find a shorter way to solve this problem? But let's come back to this. One Is this quantity divisible by 125? That's the question. We will show that it is not. So 401 to the power 49 plus 401 to the power 48 up to 401 to the power 1 plus 1. Is this divisible by 125? Well, the answer is no, it is not. Why is it not? Okay, so we can actually check. So first we notice that 401 is congruent to 26 mod 125. This is a very easy calculation. You can do this. Very simple. If you subtract from 401, 26, you would get 375, which is divisible by 125. Okay. So 401 square is convert to 26 square mod 125. 401 cube is convert to 26 cube mod 125. 401 to the power 4 is converted to 26 raised to the power 4 mod 125. And the last thing you need is 401 to the power 5, which is converted to 26 to the power 5 mod 125. Now, this thing is obviously 1. Why is congruent to 1 actually? Why is that? Well, there are multiple ways of seeing this. You can write 26 as 25 plus 1. So 26 raised to the power 5 is 25 raised to the plus 1 raised to the power 5. And you can check that this is 5 choose 0, 25 times 2 is to the power 5, 
5 choose 1, 25 raised to the power 4, 5 choose 4, 25 raised to the power 1 plus 1. So all of these things are divisible by 125. So you're left out with 1. So the value is, well, it's congruent to 1 mod 125. This is another technique that I wanted to share with you. This is another lesson, sort of lesson 3. How to use modular arithmetic with binomial theorem. It's a very strong technique. So once you reach 1, then all of these values will again repeat. All of these values will again repeat. So what you can check now, and this is actually a little bit of calculation. You can check that if you add all of this up, if you add all of this up, this is not congruent to 0 mod 125. Okay, now what will happen is, you will get these same numbers repeated. These, these particular remainders repeated for 401 raised to the power 6, 401 raised to the power 7, up to 401 raised to the power 10. Again, the same pieces will be repeated 10 times. It will be repeated 10 times up to 401 raised to the power 49. Remember, you started with a 1. So this is actually, if you add, so if you add all of these up and multiply by 10, you will get something that's congruent to 50 mod 125. So that's not divisible by 125. It's not 0 mod 125. So I would challenge you to actually do these calculations and find all the five things, five modular values and the total sum. I hope you learned something from this particular problem. We talked about factorization. We talked about modular arithmetic. We talked about relationship of binomial theorem with modular arithmetic. So all of these things are very useful in solving number theory problems. If you know a shorter way of doing this, and there are shorter ways, I challenge you to actually put that in the comment section. Thank you for watching this video. This was a fantastic learning experience. I hope to see you in the next one. Take care and goodbye.